The following is a presentation of Chandler Christian Church in Chandler, Arizona. For more information, please go to chandlercc.org. Pretty telling. You know, we, uh, we, I, I love to go out to eat. We all love to go out to eat. And one time our staff uh, went out to a restaurant to eat, a bunch of us. And I have this habit when I go to restaurants, I ask our server if there's anything uh, we're going to pray before our meals or anything we can pray for them. And uh, usually I'm greeted by a great response to it. But this particular time we went to the restaurant and I asked that uh, with the, re- the server and uh, she said yes. And then uh, we were getting ready for our food to come and we're all sitting there. And uh, this man came walking out with a clipboard and another a couple of people with him. And he said, did someone on this table ask my server if they could pray for her? And my entire staff did this and pointed at me, you know? <laughs> well, as it ended out, he had some prayer requests of his own, and we prayed for him as well. But when it comes to money issues, we're all quick to point to somebody else, aren't we? We're all really quick to say, it's that, well, it's that fault. That's the, that's the reason. That's, it's that fault. We're quick to point to somebody else. But the cause, in reality, the problem is in our own hands. We oftentimes get into horrible financial difficulties because of our own hands and our own reasons. Barry Cameron, in this book that we're reading, The ABCs of Financial Freedom, says, No matter what you've been told and no matter who told you, the truth is, living with relentless financial pressure, bills, burdens, and the bondage of debt are all consequences of our own choices. Now, there can be extenuating circumstances, and I do understand that. There can be financial issues. There can be uh, uh, health issues that put you way behind the eight ball. There can be situations that take place uh, and some reversals that are uh, unbeknownst to you, uh, uncontrollable by you. But the reality is, for most of us, and for the most part, our choices carry corresponding consequences. The choices we make carry corresponding consequences. Jesus tells this incredible story in Matthew chapter 25. And let me give you the context. Matthew 25 is in the context of the second coming of Christ. In other words, Jesus is going to go away and he's going to come back again to receive us to himself. Now understand this context because it makes the story even more particularly important. And Jesus, in the context of the second coming, says, there is a certain wealthy man who went away on a journey, but before he did... He brought three of his servants in, and he entrusted them as wealth. He gave to one man five bags of gold because he knew he could handle that. He gave to one man two bags of gold because he knew he could handle that. And he gave one man one bag of gold because he knew he could handle that. In other words, he gave them what he knew they could deal with, what they could handle. And he said, I want you to do your best with this, and when I come back, I'll call you into accounting. So the man with five bags went out, invested it, used it wisely, doubled the amount that the master had given to him. The man with two bags did the same, but the man with one bag didn't do anything with it. He didn't waste it, he didn't lose it, but he buried it in the ground so there was nothing lost but nothing gained. You know this story, don't you? The businessman came back and he called his servants and said, what did you do with what I left to you? And uh, the man with five bags said, master, listen, uh, you gave me five, I doubled it while you've been gone. And the, the rich businessman put his arms around and said, great job, great job, man. You've been trustworthy with what I've given to you. I'm going to give you so much more. Uh, let's go have a party. The man with two bags said, how much did you do and what did you do with what I had? And the man said, listen, you gave me two. I used it. I doubled it. You know, I've increased it as you've asked me to do. And the businessman said, great job, super. We're, let's join the party. Let's join the party. The man with one bag said, I knew you were a tough guy. So I just hit it in the ground. I buried it in the ground. I didn't lose any of it, but I didn't get anything either. The businessman said, you wicked and lazy man. You should have at least put it in the bank so I could have gotten some interest, gotten other people's money to add to it. But because you did that, what you have is going to be taken away from you and given to somebody else. Now, this is a parable, but I want you to listen to the point that Jesus made in this parable. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 29, Jesus concluded this way. To those who use well what they are given, even, how much? More will be given. And they will have an, what's the next word? Abundance. But from those who are unfaithful, even what little they have will be taken away. And this is in the context of Jesus going to heaven and then coming back 
in the second coming. Poignant? You bet it's poignant. It's critical. So is the fact that I forgot to turn my phone on stun when I came into the service, and so I'm going to do that right now. And if you haven't done the same, I encourage you to do so. All right. Well, you see, our choices really do matter today. Uh, they're critical. We're talking about the choices that really matter. And when it comes to our finances and when it comes to our lives, we need to make sure that we make the right choices. And, and, and this is talked about here by Jesus, but the world's wisest man other than Christ also talked about it. Solomon writes in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, these words. He says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life for many years and bring you what? Prosperity. Say, prosperity is talked about in the Bible? You bet it is. And God's promise here is that if we follow him, if we do what he if we trust him and do what we know he wants us to do instead of our own understanding, he's going to bless us with prosperity. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. You trust God, you do what he wants you to do instead of what you might think is right. You do what, and he will make your path straight. He'll make an easy way for you. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, the next two verses. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Don't try to do it your way. Do, don't do evil. Do it God's way, and you'll be blessed for it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, the next two verses. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Of course, this is an agrarian society. We understand they're talking about uh, farming increase, and today we don't do that. Think of it this way, that your paychecks will continue. In fact, they will increase, and your investments will do well as well. He says, if we honor the Lord first with everything that we've got, then God is going to bless our socks off. But then he adds these next two verses, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. He says, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. The Lord loves us enough to try to move us onto the right path. Don't be angry with him when he does so because he's just a loving father. Just like when you had your children and your children were doing the wrong thing, you would say, no, don't do that. Do it this way. You would discipline them to try to get them the right way, the way of blessing, the way of joy. And God does the same for us. You see, all of us make choices on how we're going to use the resources that God has given to us. And, and, I, and he's loaned them to us. You remember the parable Jesus told? The man went away and he gave his wealth to his servants to use while he was gone. I mean, he loaned it to us. It's his, it's not ours. And we have to choose how we're going to use it. We can choose uh, to forget God's teachings, do our own thing, just uh, ignore them. I don't care what you say, God, and that will lead to ruin. We can choose to use our own understanding we can say, God, I'm going, to use, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it instead of the way you want me to do it. We can choose to be wise in our own eyes. God, I know what you say, but I think this is how I should invest or use the resources that you loan to me. We can refuse to honor the Lord with all of our wealth. We can say, God, you know, this is mine. You can't have it. It's mine. You can't have it. And if we choose to do that, then we choose to pay the price of the Lord's discipline. Or we can choose to keep his teachings and commands that lead to what? Prosperity. Or, or we can choose to trust the Lord and, and let him make our lives be blessed. Or we can choose to respect God and shun evil ways for physical and financial health. Or we can choose to honor the Lord with the tithe and then let him bless our socks off. It's your choice. What do you choose? You see, God loves us enough to let us make the choice. 